Hey you beauts, welcome back to Mr. Canucks Grow. By the way, my name is Matt if this is the first time you're stopping in. How you doing? So today I wanted to put together a beginner's guide to setting up an indoor grow and I am going to cover all the basics and key factors to a proper grow setup in your home. 100% this video is geared towards newbies or beginner growers and it's going to be focused on setting up a smaller size grow. <laughs> So, just before this video starts, I want to thank the sponsor, the Green Sunshine Company. They did hook me up with the ES180 V2 LED, but even more importantly, they gave me a promo code for you guys. So, if you want more details on the Electrosky V2s, the link and code are going to be down below in the description. And just a reminder, this video is sponsored. So, let's start right from the beginning. You found a spot in your home that you want to grow, and in my case, it's a cute, quaint little closet. For you, it's probably going to be a typical grow tent of of some kind, perhaps similar to the 5x5 setup that I have. Well, you're gonna have three main problems to solve in order to set up your grow. The first problem is sufficient light source for the space being used. Now, depending on your financial situation, this may not even be a problem or even a concern. Investing into a high-end LED with a high UMOL rating will be the ideal choice of light source for your grow, but that is dependent on the gardener's financials because when I started out, I had to scrape by and purchase a cheap light that just gave me the most watts for as little money as possible. Either way, if you're rich or poor, you're still going to need to know this one basic equation for equipping a grow room with the sufficient amount of light, and that equation is watts per square foot. If you're going to use high-end LEDs, 35 watts per square foot is what's really required to light up that space sufficiently. If you're using older LEDs or running older bulbs like an HPS, then it's recommended to use around 50 watts per square foot. So that is the equation which works for any size room. Now this closet is not quite a full 3x2 in size, it's just shy of that on both dimensions which means this grow space is more around 5 square feet in total. So I need about 180 watts to efficiently light this grow space up so this ES180 V2 is honestly going to work out perfectly. I have recently been very successful pulling over 1 gram per watt yield in this closet growing autoflowers and now with this upgraded LED coming in at 2.3 umoles, I'm going to expect the same or improved yields based off the watts being used. Let's talk about ventilation and air circulation, which is the first thing I'm going to be installing in this closet. The exhaust fan and carbon filter does a few things. The big one is air exchange. The plants love that fresh air and CO2, so it's very important to have an exhaust fan that brings in fresh air and exhausts out all the old air. Now, the other purpose of this exhaust fan and carbon filter is to also eliminate the odors on the outside of the grow. So that means all the old stinky air and odors which are inside the grow go through the carbon filter which scrubs the air clean. This is going to allow you to grow some of the stinkiest top shelf strains without that worry of your house, you know, smelling like a skunk is living under your bed. Now recently, I helped my brother set up his first budget closet grow and we exhausted from his closet directly through the ceiling into the attic, which is the better way to set up your exhaust in a closet grow system. By doing it this way, it's going to keep the closet grow much more of a secret. Now back to my closet, I forever ago set this closet to exhaust into my attic entrance, not through the ceiling of the closet, so I can't close the doors all the way. However, this has never caused issues with my autoflower plants and terms of light leaks now with that in mind I still keep the entire room the closet is in dark during dark periods which is why I probably did not have any issues with light leaks I initially set it up this way because the attic entrance was just some plywood that I felt I could easily enough replace when I go to move and I don't know how much longer I'm actually going to be staying at my current home and just to avoid putting more holes into my home I'm just going to use the one I already made when I started to grow. 
which I'm well aware it's a little unorthodox, but it works. But that's why I wanted to also show you how my brother's was set up. Now, on top of the air exchange, your grow room also needs consistent air circulation. This way, temperatures and CO2 will spread evenly throughout the room. In this closet, I have one clip fan, which I'm placing at the top, pointed down towards the plants over the LED. So this will also keep the ES-180V tool cool because these LEDs, they have no moving parts on them, so they are passively cooled. Now on top of that clip fan, I'm also gonna be using a blizzard oscillating fan on the ground, which is on the outside of the grow pushing in. This fan is a lot stronger and is gonna provide that solid air circulation. Now the very last fundamental to setting up a proper grow room is the most underrated one and that is your environment control. So depending on the size of the grow that you plan on building out, you very well may need additional pieces of equipment in order to gain access to having control over the temperatures and relative humidity. Now it's common to hear from people skimping out on AC units or dehumidifiers to set up their first grow, but I assure you if your grow is larger than 200 watts, you're probably going to need an AC unit to keep temperatures in the ideal range for optimal health and plant growth. The only answer to heat issues is always an AC unit. The exhaust fans are meant for air exchange, not temperature control, and I often do see comments from people trying to control heat with their exhaust fans, and then they complain it's not working and they don't know what to do. Now, if you hung around this channel long enough, you do know I have multiple grows, one larger after the next. The 5x5 and 8x2 closets, they're using an AC unit to keep temperatures in check. Without that AC unit, those grows wouldn't work during the summertime, and technically, those are still considered pretty small grows. The only way to solve heat issues is by using an AC unit. Now the small 3x2 closet grow, that has never once used an AC unit, however, we're talking a measly 180 watts being used. And I always noticed in the summertime, the central air was always more than enough to keep the grow in the high 70s and in check. In the winter time, it's even easier to keep cool. Now you always need full control, so this also means control of the RH, so you also may need a dehumidifier to be able to keep your grows in that ideal range. Once again, this is a must use item on my two larger grows of mine. Without this dehu, I would struggle during the flowering cycle to maintain proper RH for optimal bud production. But now back to my closet, this is once again small enough where I don't even need a dehumidifier. The relative humidity in the home averages around 40 or 50% RH, so I really don't have to worry about the RH getting too high for this small grow. Now that I've grown for a few years, I do appreciate these smaller grows that take under 200 watts or less. They are extremely budget friendly in terms of energy consumption. Usually that does mean you can get away without an AC unit or a dehumidifier while still maintaining the ideal growing environment, but understand, as the grow increases, these other pieces of equipment 100% become a necessity in order to control your environment. Either way, this small grow, despite being under 200 watts, will more than likely bring close to half a pound in cure buds. I can see this as the more practical way of growing for anyone just starting off or trying to keep things minimal. Now every grow situation is slightly unique to that grower, which means everyone is going to be set up slightly different however these are the basics to stay on top of when you're setting up your grow and if you lock these down you're off to a fantastic start that my dudes and dudettes is the beginner's basics to the indoor grow setup if you want to catch the full seed to harvest video drop make sure you click subscribe and if you want to see the previous seed to harvest auto run in this closet i'll leave a link down below in the description Then we get down and we start to dance in my booty. Get down and boogie with the
so today I'm gonna be rolling up some Amherst Sour Diesel, some of my best Sativa Stash, and I'm gonna add in some Ripley's OG Butter Rosin, which is like the perfect crumble consistency for rolling into big joints or blunts. <laughs> Recently, I have been rolling a fair bit of hemp wraps because I sniped a great deal on Amazon for Kingpin hemp wraps. They were like 25 bucks for 25 packs of four wraps in each pack. So that's 100 wraps for 25 bucks. And uh, I will link that in the description if it's still around. I think there is only one option for flavor. I think it was the Grape Goomba, which is honestly a nice scent that brings me back to my senior high school days. Okay, well. What we're going to do is light this up and uh, go over some of the top comments on the most recent uh, YouTube video. Ah, oh, there's some rosin right at the tip. Just give me a second, guys. Got a lighter just in case it canoes. Now it's time to look at some top comments. Okay, so at the very top, we got a comment here from Tweak Boy, which is a very bad username. It's not a good one. Why don't you try and make some diamonds with your rosin? You know what? Making diamonds with uh, your rosin is a little bit overplayed. You're actually risking the terpene profiles and stuff because you're putting it through more heat. So even the people who are experts at making diamonds will tell you there's no purpose to this other than the look. People love the look of some diamonds sitting in sauce, but what you're doing is separating the terpene profiles, all the terpenes from the actual THC crystals. So if you remove all the juicy stuff from the diamonds, you really just have no flavor. You just have all the medicine. Now put it all back together because I want it all when I go to smoke. <laughs> okay, Vipe here says, bro, I gotta ask, were you a cartoon in your past life? Yeah, I get a lot of comments in regards to how, usually it's negative though, in regards to my voice. People usually don't like it. And I guess some people say you sound like Quagmire. I've had all kinds of different things. Peter Schneider, he goes, can you show how much of your own weed, jarred weed and hash and rosin you currently have? Why? I'm always scared to show everything. It's just like, there's no point. Okay, next guy, we got Poon Slayer. That's a good username. You know, Tweak Boy? Take note, Poon Slayer, that guy could teach a class on how to make usernames. He says, I heard some people were getting some purple rosin from Fast Buds LSD. Oh, that's good to know. I've seen a lot of Fast Buds lately. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are growing with them. I particularly have never had any experience with them, so maybe that's something to give a try on the next go. <laughs> the Wallaby Edit says, I'll be your sifting butler and trim for two boxes of cereal per harvest. I can I can afford that one. What kind of cereal though? So Token Sweden, he goes, should we make a friendly little bet on the outcome of the Hockey World Championship this year? Hey, us Canadians, we sweat hockey. We uh we love hockey. Okay, Brendan Clark, he goes, That rosin looks fire, love your videos, but do you know what happened to the Grateful Grower? I saw where he gave you a shout out. Oh yeah, that's crazy. That's forever ago. His channel's still around and uh, <clears throat> when he gave me the shout out, I think he had like 13,000 subscribers when he gave my channel that had like a thousand subscribers. Like we're talking way back. His channel is actually uh, still around so you can go to it. It's got like over 60 something, maybe even more now. Maybe even like almost 100. I haven't been to it in a while but if you go to his channel right now, you can still watch his old videos and I really do recommend them because they are solid videos, very informative and they're well edited so they're fun to watch. So yeah, the Grateful Grower, man. That's uh, taking a trip down memory lane. We got Joseph Kramer. How do you take your coffee, black cream, and sugar, question mark? Well, straight up, I always just drink black coffee. It's very rare. I, like, if I go to like Tim Hortons, I'll get a regular for some reason, but uh, for the most part, I just drink black coffee. Nathan Hamilton goes, hey Matt, long time viewer, did you get a new mic? Sound is bassy. Just looking for somewhere I can get these screens in Australia. Well, hopefully you can maybe get those screens if uh, you check on Amazon, potentially, maybe. And yeah, I did 
not really get a new mic, but I started using my voiceover setup for the sit down talks because I thought it improved the audio. Perhaps I upped the bass too much on that last video. I'm not too sure. I thought it was okay. I quality check everything, but sometimes you just, after editing four days straight, hearing the same stuff over and over again, it sometimes can get hard to really tune things in, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't. Okay guys, so that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these comments. I might do them more often at the end of video, so if you like them, please let me know down below. Don't forget, hit the like button and comment because it does really help the channel. If you want to check out the Patreon page, that's going to be linked down below. There's multiple tiers. You don't got to donate every single month. It opens up access to additional content, including a community. It opens up access to the community board so all the Patreons can share pictures of their grow and or their problems and the entire community, including myself can share our advice and you can DM me any single time on patreon and I will answer you back yeah that's down below if you want to support me that way but don't forget just hitting the like and comment is always more than enough and uh, yeah anyways hope you enjoy your day I'm gonna enjoy mine more because I'm already having a good time I don't